Hello? Hello, is that old effect? Uh, and his nan making Neurofunk bases? Sure is, guys. How are you guys doing? Uh, here's some bananas. And um, make sure you hit the subscribe button, you absolute legend. Uh, yes. Today, uh, well, as you can see, I'm back in back in the old the old basement, back in the old digs in Berlin, which is great because I received a, a message recently from my loyal uh, patron supporter Dasmatron slash Lady Desire slash Dasma Beast slash Pablo Martinez. He changes his name every every three days. So, um, but we had a request that he said, you know, I really miss the old Christmas um, hat as the microphone sock. So, being back in Berlin, I've had access to that. So that's exciting, isn't it? Anyway, um, on to more pressing matters. Today, what I want to do is I want to just uh, give you a little breakdown of a wicked new base that I made in Phase Plant. One of I'm looking up there. I should be looking directly at you. There you are. Um, yeah, one of my favourites that I've made uh, recently. Neurofunk kind of uh, re almost recy. Got a lot of nice movement in it though. It's, it's uh, I struggled a little bit with the, my last few patches to get a really nice sort of filtered movement into the sound. Like I, I, I knew I could keep doing better, and I got a little bit closer this time for a nice neurofunk bass. And um, although I'm like proper enjoying the granular synthesis section, I didn't I didn't actually use it for this um, for this patch. But I'm definitely going to go back to doing some granular stuff uh, after this one. It's just. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of went down this r r road of designing it um, just with the normal sample section because that's what my default setting is and I didn't end up uh, changing it to a granular one. Anyway, I'll stop ranting. Here's what it sounds like. And I've got a little like kind of... Um, sh I've only set one macro up so far. I'll probably set some more up. But um, it's just a shift to control the groove. So I like it at this 100% setting here. So let's have a little listen to this cheeky... I've called it the ultra... Uh, ultra dope neuro bass. Oh, I missed the timing there. Hang on. So some sick like grooves you can get by just by shifting that, and that's just shifting. Um, it's just shifting, mate. It's just shifting things, mate. It's shifting just the uh, LFO. I don't know if, if it's the phase or if it's the rate. Um, yeah, it's just shifting. Yeah, it's shifting the rates of the LFOs. So I've got an an LFO sandwich uh, going on. So one main LFO doing the whole movement, and then a secondary LFO um, playing around with the phase of the first one so it skips around the start position of the main LFO um, as we go along as you hold the note down uh, so anyway let's talk about the important part of this which is the sound design then yeah so we leave leave the shift up uh, I'll turn off the lanes and then um, yeah it's pretty like straightforward with the oscillator section we basically have a sine wave uh, as the top one is a uh, minus 24 and um, all that's uh, all that's really going on is it's having a bit of FM coming in from a sample, and it's also got a bit of modulation on the sync mode. So that basically turns it into a little bit more of a uh, choppier kind of uh, wavetable. You can see that the, uh, the the FM is doing that as well, but the sync will really, um, yeah, play with the. <laughs> it will make it like way more harsher, you know. So I use it in a sparing amount. So I only use it a little bit, uh, as you can see up and down here on the LFO. So this is kind of how it sounds without all the effects. So you can hear the effects like are quite responsible for a, a lot of the the final result, especially the movement. So that's where we're going to dive into that uh, soon to to talk about um, yeah how we got it to be become like much more dynamic and get that movement that I was after, you know. Um, but yeah, so so like obviously we have the. Um, by the way, yeah, I'm back from Colombia, back from South America, back in Berlin, and uh, gonna be staying here uh, in Europe for uh, at least the rest of summer. Not quite sure um, if I'll stay like here forever. I don't really know. I don't really like to plan too far ahead, to be honest, because life's a bit boring when you uh, have everything planned out. So just take it as it comes. But I'm definitely hanging around Berlin for summer because it's a great place in summer, and uh, yeah, hopefully get 
play a few shows across across Germany and maybe some other countries in Europe uh, as well this year. So that should be fun. I'll let you guys know where I am. Had a sick night down in Brighton the other day. Shout out to everyone who came down. Even my student, uh, uh, Carl, I saw him. I've never set, seen in real life before. Shout out to you. Shout out to Ian, who came all the way from Leicester. My G, Mark, came all the way from Dorset. And Rick Eve, who's a sick producer, also one of my old students and patron supporter, came down from Belgium just to the Brighton gig. So that was dope. We had a proper little uh, Patreon crew meetup, which was sick. But uh, anyway, let's get back on to this then. Uh, so... What I've chosen as the sample is in the Simple Sound Analog Synth 100 or C, C, SY 105th. And uh, yeah, it's got a nice... Um, oh, I still haven't plugged in my, um, my MIDI keyboard yet, so I'll probably do that for the next one. But Yeah, it's, it's a nice uh, old school analog kind of uh, sample, but what... You know, it does, it's not great on its own, but when you FM it, into um, the sine wave here. Yeah, so if I take that off for a moment. Yeah, so we've got a blend of a normal sine wave and the uh, sample, the analog sample here, you know? And what you saw I did there is I took the gain off, so the signal is only going through the FM sine wave. The, the signal doesn't go through um, the sample, so it doesn't sort of double up, you know? So it's more of a singular kind of sound. As always, love a bit of white noise on top of everything. So just a bit of simple white noise here with a high pass filter. Nice and stereoed. This, this one's quite high up on the volume as well at 10%. And um, yeah, I'm also modulating the volume of the white noise to come up and down on the LFO. So the sync of the, of the sine wave gets a little bit sharper and the white noise comes up and down. And I think those are the only two movements that are going on in this section. Yeah, so you can hear. Overall, it's still quite a sustained sound, so it doesn't really have all that dynamic interest yet until we get onto the effects, which we're just about to. And the global unison just takes it from like kind of overly mono sounds to like a little bit more spread out and a bit of a nice chorus going on in, in there, you know? Okay, so so like let's move on then because there's not really much else going on here. It's all the magic happening uh, in the effects, to be honest. So yeah, this is quite exciting because it does make a huge difference. And uh, yeah, I'm going to... I designed this patch like back in England, like a, a few days ago. So I'm gonna sort of remember it with you here. But yeah, so first up, Overdrive, most cleanest distortion in Phase Plant for me. And um, yeah, sometimes you can go pretty hard with it. Like it always starts off at 6 dB, which is quite high, but uh, oftentimes it will um, it'll still sound good if you've got sort of a simple uh, oscillated section to begin with like to spread it up a little bit, spread the Marmite, you either love it or you hate it there. Then we're going to get a, um, a filter going on. By the way, uh, I met a couple of other uh, YouTube subscribers down at the Brighton gig as well. I think at least three or four um, of you guys who watch my uh, videos were down there and come and said hello to me, which was epic. So thanks a lot for coming down to the gig. You know who you are because we chatted there. And um, yeah, it's amazing to, to like be able to do like teaching on YouTube and um, yeah, on Zoom and stuff as well. And then also like go out to, to the gigs and, and meet you guys actually out there in real life. And it's just like, yeah, it's, everything comes full circle really. Okay, so here's where it starts to get thick because this is where we're gonna just use a band pass filter to like get that whole movement into the sound. So we had all these loads of harmonics and now we're just gonna like sculpt the whole sound with a nice band pass filter. So normal filter, band pass mode on, and yeah, turned up the cutoff on our main LFO. If I turn this one off here, then you'll just get the normal movement of the LFO one. Okay, but because I'm I'm running an LFO into the phase of this one, that's why it looks like it's glitching out because it 
keeps randomly skipping around. But that's how I get the um, the more interesting like and funkier movements that are a bit random. Which that, that's what I want though. So next then, because the bandpass filter, you know, like although we've shaped it and, and made like a nice movement with it, it will it drastically re reduces the volume of everything because if you look you know how many frequencies we've actually taken out that are not you know running through the band pass like loads right so so that's why i like to do that sort of quite early on the band pass and then we're going to spend the rest of the evening or day or morning or breakfast or when you're eating your kiwi fruit um smashing all the volume back up again through various effects so next up then is the distortion which is my favorite one which is the loudest one i think and it's the sign one okay so i'm modulating a bit on the drive here so it's only up 0.75 but then it goes up another 15 percent on the lfo so yeah just uh amplifying the movement that i've already got by using the distortion for that you know so just um in this case it, it's kind of not really changing the tone too much it's just really boosting the volume back up again so sometimes the sign mode will really change the tone as well in this case um because it was quite low it's basically just sort of brought it back up to a, a relatively nice volume again so now we're going to add some extra harmonics and a bit of space into the sound with the convolver. And you can hear it's got a nice tail on it now. And also you've got this extra stadium air in the high end. And there's loads of wicked presets for the convolver with Killer Hearts. Um, I particularly like this one often. It's the eerie loading dock because it adds quite a lot of high end harmonics. And it's not a really long one either. So it's, yeah, it's a nice way to get some like uh, more high-end focused reverb, which is not super, super long. So it's kind of a medium length. Yeah. And um, yeah, so next then, we're going to uh, get a bit crazier with the comb filter, which you kind of either love or you hate again. And basically, uh, like I said on a previous video, it doesn't seem as good. Doesn't always work that well when you mix it in halfway, so I tend to go either on or off with it. So I've chosen to use it, go to 100%, and then I've just been very careful about what frequency I've set it to because it makes a big difference to the tone. And although there is still like quite cool, it's like it for me, it's like too overly comb filter sounding. So that's why a little bit lower. The, the, the sort of main focus is still like in the mid range and the low end and it's got this comb filter like kind of sound you hear on it but it, it's not like the main part of it the main part is still like the kind of bassy and like mid rangey um kind of part to the sound that was still there from before we added the comb you know but it, but it for me it's actually brought out the bass a little bit more made it even more powerful in some way you know so i like that uh, the ensemble then, I think that, yeah, the mix is set to zero. So I'm kind of mixing it on and off on the LFO. And it's up quite high with the voices, like nine voices. So yeah, it's just adding a little bit of extra like width and warmth and chorus kind of um, effect. Like I mentioned before, like I like the ensemble more than the chorus. It's a similar kind of plugin, but to me, it just sounds a little bit nicer. Um, so I tend to use that at the moment. Uh, the ring mod then to add in some noise. So I've often done this in the past, even with the Killer Hearts um, FX plugins. If I want extra white noise in the sound, like on Ableton, you have the erosion. The same way you use it here, you select the bandpass noise, and then you get this little bit of white noise that you can inject into the signal. And you just choose, you know, how high up the white noise is or low with the frequency here. So I'll modulate that a little bit so it moves a little bit and then I'll mix it in um, a little bit, the amount of noise, you know. But basically, you've got to turn the bias and the rectify all the way up for it to sound like good and sound like it's uh, got the white noise coming in. Otherwise, it doesn't really quite sound the same, you know. It's just, it's, it's, it's just normally a, at the most optimum um, kind of 
sound quality when you whack those up for this effect. Uh, that's what I found. Then I've got another filter and uh, this time we're doing some notch filtering. So getting a bit more neurofunk with the notch filter. Starting to emphasize a little bit more the bassy low end and the high end and yeah, sculpt out a bit of mid range, but never too, never too much in one place. So that's why I, I like to move it a little bit on the cutoff. So it's like, a, you know, we still get most of the mid range harmonics at some point or another. It's just going to, you know, it's going to delete the harmonics there a little bit, you know, back and forth, but not the whole thing down the whole time you know otherwise i'd lose a bit too much mid-range because i still want mid-range in there it's just uh, shaping it it's not taking it all away okay but yeah as i've done that to shape it you know i have lost some power in the mid-range so that's where i start to uh have to boost the volume up again so normally always after filtering it comes distortion to to re reboost things because filtering takes away so you once you've taken away and shaped you can re-boost again and i would like to do that with distortion so this one really really clean and it, you can really hear uh it hasn't like massive it hasn't uh, destroyed the sound it's just brought it back up to a great volume again uh so the nice clean overdrive setting for this one and i'll just switch between the different modes there's no right or wrong sometimes one just works better than another now, I'm not always a big fan of the Faturator, but it sounded quite nice on this um, bass. And I'll just use the drive a little bit. And it's just um, modulating up a few percent, so it's not massive. The mix is all the way up, though. Yeah, it just it seemed to glue things together even more in this case and saturate the high end quite nicely. It doesn't always do that for me. It's like uh, sometimes... Um, It's a subtle, it's a th three or it's a four or five percent bonus on top of the sound, so it's not a massive uh, part of the effects change. But yeah, it did, it did seem to like saturate those highs together quite nicely for me. And um, yeah, after that, again, I've used another overdrive here. You can, I've used the overdrive quite a lot. Um, I guess it was just it, the sound just wanted that kind of clean. Um, distortion layering so some of the other distortion modes can be a bit too aggressive sometimes but the overdrive is normally the like easiest one to use but yeah in that you know after after that factorator I guess or, or even just after the filter it just kind of lended itself to have a, another layer of distortion more you know it just brought out the low end and, and the the nice dynamic parts of the sound like even more so that's why I, I, I don't have any regrets about using a, another distortion again. <laughs> and then a little bit of high-end boosting. This is on the LFO as well. Yeah, so no, often I'll just boost the highs a little bit uh, at the end. Uh, normally only when we've, you know, already filtered them all out here. So we, we've re sort of artificially added high end again with all the distortion and with the like white noise. Uh, sometimes it's still not enough once I've sort of filtered it out in the beginning. So that's why I'll often do a high end boost at the end of the sound. And uh, yeah, if I want if I want it to be a little bit more dynamic and uh, yeah, not just a, a shelf that stays up, then I'll modulate that shelf to come up and down a little bit. Uh, it's starting at zero though, so I'm only boosting. I'm not ever like taking on any out of it, you know? And then, yeah, with the shift position, like I said, I just play with the rates. So it can go either way, really. You can slow one down, turn one up. It's going to be pretty random anyway when you're doing this technique of uh, modulating the phase of, of one LFO with another one. So yeah, it doesn't really matter too much because <laughs> it's going to be just mental anyway. So, But that's cool. That's a nice speed there. But yeah, so so when you when you when you have control of the um, the movement with that, you can like really then get like stuck into getting the best groove for the sound that you want. And um, yeah, like it doesn't really matter that you're changing the groove. It's not really going to change. It, it's only going to make it better, you know, because you get different grooves. It's not really going to change like the tone too much of what you got going on. Because we're not really modulating anything other than the speeds 
and like all of the effects of running through the L the one LFO. So you just you you get to play with all the effects changing at the same time always when you play when you play with the speed of that. So that's why it's just going to sound dope, and you can just yeah the dynamics of of all the effects and and things will still like always line up together. So that's why I like to like often put everything through one LFO. And then, yeah, if I want to get crazy, modulate that LFO with another one to get more interesting rhythms. But I hope you like this tutorial today, my Gs. And um, I might do another resampling video after this. I might do like a bit of half and half, like a synthesis video, then like a resampling video. And maybe I'll try and like see if I can find some new new plugins and things for like a resampling um, purpose that we could like try out some new stuff together. Because, uh, yeah, like I feel like I could... Um, yeah, try try and get something even even more new and interesting to to do some resampling with, rather than just using Ruiner every you know every two minutes because Ruiner is great. Um, so I might do a resampling one on this next. Uh, but yeah, that's the Ultra Dope Neuro Bass, and I think it's definitely one of my favourite ones that I've made. And yeah, really really important to to get a nice band pass going on on this one to to get that movement going in, and then just yeah stacking up a bunch of effects to get it to to be like nice and loud and crispy again. But yeah, generally the voicing section's pretty simple in this one, so no granular on this uh this time round. But we'll definitely get back to the granular soon, probably after I do a little resampling video on this. But yeah, I hope you like that, my G's and um. Yeah, feel free to copy the patch if you want, step by step. Or if you're on Discord, just text me on there and I'll, I'll drop the preset on there if you guys want it. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for all your support. Make sure you subscribe and all that. And uh, book in for mentorship sessions up above if you want to take your sound to the next level with me. You can speed up your, your music production process and journey. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to pay in advance for those and then make sure that you use the lessons uh, within the allotted time frame because I have like some package deals but they are limited because the idea is with the package is that you like um yeah it's it's designed so that you you you're more reg regular you know weekly kind of thing otherwise if you just want like a one-off then then you should pay like the full price which is still pretty low to be fair in my opinion it could, I reckon it could be a, a fair bit higher for what I offer but that's just me anyway um, yeah, thanks a lot anyway, my Gs, and I'll be back in a couple of days with a, with another uh, resampling video, I reckon. Have a great rest of your week. Peace out.